This is the hospital Santa Ana, tucked in the middle of the picturesque town of Ferrara, Italy. And you're about to see something never shown before on television. It's an experimental treatment to open up the blocked veins that Dr. Paolo Zamboni and his team have been finding in patients with multiple sclerosis. So you decided to move ahead with the treatment now that you had made the diagnosis, right? Yes. Treatment of a narrowing could be a good way for eliminating iron deposition, so dangerous iron stores in the brain. And MS patients like this young woman are lining up for his research studies. For years, doctors have used tiny balloons to open up blocked arteries. It's a procedure called angioplasty. Dr. Zamboni decided to try a similar treatment in patients with MS who have blocked veins. Dr. Robert Galeotti, an interventional radiologist, threads a wire through the key veins that drain blood from the brain. Like most MS patients they've studied, she has two blocked jugular veins in her neck. You can see one on the scan. Look at, at this section and look at this. A narrowing. A narrowing. Yes. It's a significant stenosis because it's certainly more than 50%. <laughs> Doctors then send in a small balloon and inflate it. Once the balloon is removed, Doctors watch as the blood begins to flow down normally from the brain. Uh, wow! No more narrowing. The blood goes faster than before. Dr. Zamboni's team has performed this surgery on 120 patients so far, some while the patients were having severe MS attacks, with dramatic results. Sometimes it was unbelievable because they told us now I have a normal sensation. I have a sensation of my hands. I have a sensation of my legs again. It's fantastic. The doctors called it the liberation procedure, la liberazione, the Italian word for freedom, as the operation restored normal blood flow from the brain. For the patients, however, this liberation had an even more profound meaning. Here is research video taken by Dr. Zamboni's team. It shows an MS patient before the procedure. His right leg is weak and shakes. This is the same man two weeks after a liberation treatment. Another patient who drags his right leg before the treatment. A month and a half after the liberation, he has a steadier gait. You pay so a These are some of the first patients Dr. Zamboni's team has treated, speaking about their experience for the first time. Siamo liberati proprio. You're liberated. Sì. Si. Paolo Riccomini has had MS for eight years. He had three blocked veins that were opened two years ago. Bravo. Ha continuato a migliorare. Prima camminavo, camminavo, adesso cammino molto bene rispetto a prima. Rosella Rampi was diagnosed in 2003. She had two blocked veins that were open two years ago. In una decina di giorni ho recuperato completamente tutta la forza nella gamba. In an upcoming study of 65 patients with the most common form of MS, many saw a drop in the number of new brain lesions. And in the nearly two years following the surgery, 73% of patients had no more MS attacks. In the first two years after the procedure, if you maintain no narrowing in your neck veins or chest veins, you do not have more attack. And you do not have more active lesion at MRI. Maybe it's a placebo effect. Patients can be very enthusiastic in the first month, the first day after the liberation procedure. I think this can be certainly taken to account, but after two years. The first neurologist to support Dr. Zamboni's work was Fabrizio Salvi. But you don't think it's a cure? I, uh, <laughs> I think that may be the cure for MS, but I have to be careful. 
Most in the medical community haven't yet heard about what's going on in Ferrara, Italy. But among MS patients, Dr. Zamboni's work is the hottest topic on internet chat sites. That's how half a world away in Southern California, the first American patient came to be liberated. Jeff Beal, an Emmy award-winning music composer, had been withering under the weight of his disease, battling crippling fatigue. MS is more like this sort of like Chinese water torture, you know? I mean, just kind of like day in, day out, day in, day out, you know, and it's kind of like a slow slope down, you know, you'd... You know, you know the end game. The end game is different for everybody, but you kind of know that you're trending down. You know, part of his MS was fatigue, terrible fatigue, in which he literally could not keep his eyes open. His wife Joan spent hours scouring the internet for new treatments, until the day she found Dr. Zamboni's work. Literally, I think I screamed that day, and and Jeff can tell you I was running around the house. I was- <laughs> I was excited because here was finally something that made sense. They convinced a local surgeon to test Jeff, and guess what? He had two blocked jugular veins. And so Jeff became the first person to be treated outside of Italy. I remember during the procedure, they were sort of opening, when they were first opening up one of the the jugular veins, I sort of felt like like the lights went on, you know, (laughs) in a way... You know, in a very dramatic way that I had not experienced really before. I said, this is, this is interesting. It's only five months after his treatment, and Jeff is feeling stronger. Something's different here. Whether it was short-term or long-term, but there was definitely some sort of perceptible improvement, and that was incredibly encouraging. Jeff was so excited to feel like himself again. He would get through the day, and he'd be, I'm awake. And suddenly he's playing trumpet duets with Henry and he's helping Henry with his homework and he's, he's awake. And there's this presence in the house that hasn't been there for two years. But scientists elsewhere won't embrace this radical new approach until they do their own studies. So researchers at the University of Buffalo actually invited Dr. Zamboni and a group of his liberated Italian patients to collaborate on the largest study of its kind. The Buffalo team, headed by Dr. Robert Zavadinov, is now looking for over 1,000 MS patients from the U.S. and from Canada to scan their necks with ultrasounds and MRIs to find the twisted veins that may be at the root of MS. The first step is prove that this is true and that it's more prevalent in MS patients than normal controls, which I can tell you immediately I believe it is. For Buffalo neurologist Bianca Weinstock-Gutman, it's urgent research. If this is proven correctly, it will be a very, very big discovery because we'll completely change the way how we think about MS, how we put our treatment on it, and eventually we may see later on maybe other relation of these venous problems on other autoimmune disorders. But MS societies in Canada and the U.S. have issued cautious statements, saying there's insufficient evidence to suggest that this phenomenon is the cause of MS, and they discourage patients from getting tested or seeking treatment. But Dr. Zamboni insists his study results will eventually win over skeptics in the scientific world. The opposition was really big, but uh, this was never important for me because uh, uh, what uh, uh, I did was to continue to accumulate evidence, evidence, evidence. And he has important allies here at McMaster University in Hamilton. Mark Hakey, a Canadian who also works at Wayne State University in Detroit, says he too is finding surprising narrowed veins in MS patients from around the world. And this is the drainage. That's the main draining vein, and then it gets very narrow, almost like a little hair running down here. That's bad. And you saw that and you thought what? I thought Zamboni is on the right track. I was very excited by this because I felt that our finding made sense. I think this is quite a paradigm shift. 
And so he's setting up his own scientific study, encouraging MS patients to send him MRI scans of their heads and necks so he can build on Dr. Zamboni's findings. The patients need to speak up and say, we want to have something like this investigated, at least at an early stage, to see if there is credence to this theory. Even if it's 10 or 20 percent of these people who can be helped, that needs to be investigated. But the scientific world moves slowly, and Dr. Samboni's research suggests the earlier patients are treated, the better the result. MS is a progressive disease and strikes young people. So if we lose time, there are a lot of young people that progresses without possibility to get back. And this is very heavy for me, really. But for Dr. Zamboni, this has always been more than a scientific quest. It's a journey fueled by love. His wife, Elena, developed MS over a decade ago, and she was one of his team's first test subjects. Immediately. <laughs> I tested my wife immediately. And? And I found the narrowing. Elena was also one of the first patients who was liberated from those blocked veins nearly three years ago. An intensely private woman, she chose not to speak on camera, but told us she's not had an MS attack since. In the MRI, we do not have actually uh, disease activity at all. And uh, she returned to completely to their activity. She's normal? Yes. If you perform a neurological examination, you are not too capable to find neurological deficit. When you look at her now, what do you think? Do you think, I helped her? What I think is this is probably the best prize. The best prize of the research. His best prize and a gift that Dr. Zamboni now wants to share with MS patients around the world. Dr. Zamboni's scientific paper on the liberation treatment will be published next week, sure to further the debate on his radical treatment for multiple sclerosis. Now, if you want to learn more about this story, you can go to our website at w5.ctv.ca. You'll find additional information, including useful links.